welcome to The Dream Show. I'm Jane Theresa Anderson and this is episode 252-252 and it's also our first episode of 2022. And suddenly I feel like I'm saying two a lot, <laughs> episode 252-2022, but moving along. Our guest today with a dream to interpret is Mary Beth from Portland in Oregon. Now the way we do this, as many of you listening will know, is that I know nothing about the dream that a guest is bringing until we hit the record button and we start recording and we've just been through that process. So I can tell you it is um, a beautiful dream, very uplifting, lots of deep insights and And I think everyone listening is going to have something to take away from this dream. So you'll hear all about that in a minute. Um, Before we go there, just a reminder of the websites. If you haven't been to my websites for a long time, they do change from time to time. Worth going in, having another look. (laughs) JaneTeresa.com, Jane Teresa without an H, is where you can go to listen to every episode of the Dream Show that's ever been, stretching all the way back to 2009. Although, of course, you can always listen to the most recent ones on all the usual platforms, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, as of last week, I think, too, um, basically all over the place. JaneTheresa.com is also where you go to read hundreds of blogs that I've written about dreams and dreaming. And it's also where you go to find out about how you can consult me privately if that's what you would like to do. The other website, the Dream Academy, is my online learning platform and you can find that at dream-academy-online.com and that's where you can go to do my various courses, starting with course one, which is how to interpret your dreams step by step and working all the way up to through um, dream therapy professional certificate courses. You do those largely in your own time, so you can decide to start a course and begin it straight away so dream-academy-online.com or find me on Facebook or Instagram but let's go to Mary Beth now. Welcome to the dream show Mary Beth. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Now you're in Portland, Oregon so while it's sort of mid-morning here in Hobart I think it's late afternoon where you are? Yes it's about 4 30. Have you had a good day? I have had a good day, yes. <laughs> and what's what's the weather like? Out of are you looking out of a window? I am looking out of a window, and right now it's beautiful. Um, the, there's been some rain today, but right now there's blue skies, and the fall leaves look gorgeous, and it's a lovely view. Sounds absolutely idyllic. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, as usual, I have absolutely no idea what dream anybody's bringing me, so it's over to you now, Mary Beth. Okay, perfect. Um, I will start in. Um, so this dream started off with me at my office, um, and it was sort of a typical day at work. Um, I'm a therapist, and so I was just sitting at my desk in my office in my dream, and I opened a door that's just to kind of a storage room that we have. So I opened the door to just grab something, um, and when I opened the door, I realized that there was like a whole other kind of wing of the building outside this door. So we are... We're, the house that I work in is a it is a house um, that's been transitioned into offices office mm-hmm. spaces, and so um, when I opened this door, there was a whole other hallway with like three large rooms that were set up for therapy, um, very much the same way as the what exists in real life, but it just was a whole other one. So basically, it was like a mirror image of what was already there. Mm. Um, So this new hallway that I discovered had three large rooms, and the rooms were um, really larger and bigger and better than the rooms that exist, and they had more um, equipment in them. They had more, like, art supplies, and, you know, I work with kids and lots of things for kids to play with, and um, one of my favorite forms of therapy that I utilize is sand tray therapy, and so one room was just, like, this giant plethora of sand items to put in the sand tray and multiple sand trays and it was just this idyllic sort of therapy setup yes um yeah so in my dream then I was I was feeling like pretty amazed to find these rooms and I was just thinking of like oh my gosh all the possibilities that exist here um you know we could be seeing more kids we could hire more therapists maybe we could start serving adults, which is something I've been thinking about in the real world. Mm. (laughs) Um, 
And in my dream, I was a little, also feeling a little confused, like how could this possibly have been here all along? And I have never even noticed it. Um, and I remember also feeling a little bit of kind of disappointment in myself for that reason. Like what's wrong with me that I never opened this door and saw all this awesomeness. Um, so then I kind of spent some time in, particularly in the room that had the sand tray and the sand tray items in it. Um, and just was kind of walking around the room, admiring all of the different things that were available in there and touching things and, you know, kind of running my fingers through the sand. Um, and then I suddenly came to this realization of like what time it was and that, oh gosh, my husband is about to pick me up because we're going on a camping trip and like, I need to get ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had kind of kind of a moment of sadness, like, oh, I kind of want to hang out in here for a while. And I wish that my coworkers were here so I could say, hey, look what I found, but <laughs> nobody was there. <laughs> um, so I think I just sort of made a mental note to myself, like, oh, next time I see them, I'm going to have to show them this. They're going to be so excited. Um, and then the next thing I know, so I don't recall any sort of transition at this point, but the next thing I know, I'm just in our pickup truck with my husband, John, driving to a camping destination. Um, mm -hmm. And he and I are just driving along and the, the road that we're on is just like amazingly just scenic and beautiful. And um, there was like really brilliant, kind of like I just mentioned, brilliant, brilliant fall colors, like everywhere around, um, like almost kind of exaggerated, like beyond what you would typically see in reality, just all these beautiful fall colors. There's like a rolling river, you know, along alongside the road that we're driving. And every once in a while we would come along, we would come upon like a just glorious, big flowing waterfall. It was just, you know, just awe inspiring. Wow. And as we're driving, I keep every time we come upon one of these things, I keep grabbing my phone like, oh, I need to get a picture of this. And then every time I would like not be able to find my phone or I'd pick it up and drop it <laughs> or I would open it but I couldn't get to the camera app <laughs> or <laughs> just things just kept happening happening that wouldn't let me actually take a picture um and then we kind of I recall like my husband and I kind of having this conversation about should we turn around and go back so we can take some pictures of all of that that was so pretty and we kind of just talked about it for a while and for whatever reason decided to continue driving. Like, I don't remember it being a debate or an argument. It was just sort of a, mm -hmm. we just talked and then we just were like, no, we'll just keep going. And so eventually we arrived at um, a campsite and we set up a camp and I remember that it was kind of drizzly raining at this part of it and that where we were setting up our camp stuff was kind of muddy. Um, but it didn't seem like that was a big deal at all. Like it just seemed like this is this was part of the plan, and here we are setting up our camp in the mud, and um, didn't it didn't seem to be a negative thing at all in the dream. Mm -hmm. um, so then, as we're at the campsite, and things kind of shift again for me. So we're there, and then suddenly my daughter arrives. So her name is Izzy, and she is a college student. She's 20 years old right now. So in my dream, she arrives. And then she invites me um, to come to a dinner party um, that's being hosted by her boyfriend's parents. Hmm. So, and I don't know where, I also have a son who's in high school and he's not, he must be with his friends because he's not in, <laughs> in this um, dream. So she comes along and invites me to this party at her boyfriend's parents' house. I've met her boyfriend a few times, and I've, but I've never met his parents in real life. Or in the dream. <laughs> um, so I remember feeling really like excited and kind of honored that like, oh, I get to meet his parents and I get to spend some time with, with Izzy and her boyfriend and this is going to be great. And um, I remember feeling pretty enthusiastic about it. And at this point, I'm just interacting with Izzy and I don't know where my husband John has gone to. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. like in the tent or something but suddenly he's just kind of not part of the conversation so Izzy and I are just discussing this and then um, I agree to go and then the next thing I know we're standing we're at his um, her boyfriend's name is Kelly and at that point we're at his home yeah just, so it's just yeah. Izzy Kelly and I 
and were standing outside the door of their home, and it, it seemed like it was like a really kind of fancy, big apartment kind of a dwelling. Um, so we were like in a lobby, and I remember there was there was a like a water feature, like a fountain, and there was lots of greenery and flowers, and it was a really pretty kind of lobby area that we were in. Mm-hmm. Um, I could tell that there was a lot of people inside the apartment because I could just hear voices and laughter and music, and it just sounded like a really cheery, fun thing going on behind that door. <laughs> um, and I remember there was also like a podium just outside the door with like a guest book um, to sign in as you entered the party. Um, and then it was at that point in my dream that I suddenly realized like, oh boy, I'm only wearing a t-shirt that um, like just barely covers anything. Like it's just long enough to cover yeah. um, myself and I have nothing under it. So I have this sudden like, oh geez, like, <laughs> how did I get here wearing this? This is terrible. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of surprised and embarrassed. And I remember just sort of kind of leaning over and whispering to my daughter, like, I can't go in. Like, I'm, look what I'm wearing. I can't go in there like this. Um, and then both she and um, Kelly just kind of smile at me, and they're like, it's fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and they're just being, trying to be real, very reassuring. And then um, eventually they say, you know, just take the T-shirt off and just come inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> and then <laughs> at that point, I realized they're not wearing any clothes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. So then I'm like, wait a minute. But in the dream, it was very like, I was just like, I only remember seeing their faces, but just somehow I knew they weren't wearing any clothes. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like, you know, it didn't feel like any sort of weird exposure. Yeah. Somehow I was only like interacting with their faces, but I knew they were naked. Um, and they seemed just like so happy and just relaxed and like they didn't have a care in the world. And they're just like, come on in. And Kelly is very like caring and reassuring with me. And like, I just want you to be comfortable. This is really normal with my family. We do this and we're just all open with each other. And, um, you know, I don't want you to to feel shy or to feel nervous. And people will accept you just the way you are. Come on in. Um, and, Mm. and I remember I was just sort of feeling like, um, this weird mix of like, oh, I kind of want to try this. (laughs) This is kind of exciting. This is different. And then I was also feeling this like, um, I don't think this is appropriate. (laughs) And feeling especially like, wait a minute, I'm the mom here. Like you guys are college kids and that's all fun for you to do things like this. But like I'm the mom and I feel like I should maybe have a boundary here that I shouldn't participate in this. So I just remember kind of having this back and forth in my head. Mm. Um, and then I remember a couple other of their friends showed up. Um, one of my daughter's roommates and her boyfriend showed up. And of course they're just, you know, the same, no clothes, comfortable, happy and and they sort of join in the like, oh, yeah, come on in. It's super fun. You'll have a great time. And um, so eventually, apparently, I decide I'm going to go for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I shed the shirt <laughs> and I sign the guest book <laughs> and I go inside. Um, and I don't remember a ton of details about like once I'm finally inside the apartment. But I do remember that there was... Um, you know, a fair number of maybe like 20 to 30 people. It was a big space, big open space. Um, So there were, you know, 20 to 30 people kind of mingling around. It wasn't like a dinner party, like with a table and place settings. It was people just kind of wandering with like small plates in their hand and cocktails and no clothes anywhere. Everybody's (laughs) (laughs) just as they are. Um, And everybody seems very secure in that they're all happily talking and eating and drinking and laughing. And, um, there's kind of some cheerful music playing in the background and things like that. Um, and again, everybody that I see, it's that same, like, I know that you don't have any clothes on, but I really am just seeing your face. I'm not seeing parts. Um, 
so and then I just remember too that then I was interacting with people laughing a lot enjoying myself um, and there was kind of this feeling for me of like really intense just like happiness and freedom and it just is really 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 just good feeling like this is this is great <laughs> like, yeah I love yes here. Oh, that's lovely. Um, and also feeling like this really welling like pride for my daughter and um, this this happiness that she's built this relationship with this partner and that they seem so secure with one another and that, that you know, they seem so comfortable. And I just remember just feeling really just so many positive emotions in that moment. Um, and then I, I was, I remembered sort of like laying on my stomach on, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, but like on a couch or a chaise or some sort of piece of furniture, or I'm kind of laying on my stomach and I have like my shoulders and arms are kind of hanging off the end. So mm -hmm. I have like a plate of food and a drink on the floor and I'm kind of eating and drinking and talking with people, but just sort of with my shoulders and arms over the end of the couch or whatever it was. Um, and I'm kind of just facing like a circle of people and we're all talking and laughing. I think they were more just sitting sort of cross-legged on the floor. I don't know why mm. I was on the funny couch, but, mm. um, but again, feeling like brave and joyful. And, um, I remember also feeling kind of a sense of safety in the fact that I was on that couch because like my whole front side was kind of covered up. Yes. My backside was exposed, <laughs> and I remember feeling like, okay, this is just the right amount. Like, I'm okay with my backside showing, and then, and I'm, I'm appreciating, like, the way I'm positioned, that yes. I can interact with people, yeah. Um, so, anyway, like, so, yeah, then we're just all talking and enjoying food and telling stories and laughing, and then in the real world, my alarm clock went off. Oh. <laughs> I know, <laughs> very abruptly brought me back into the real world. But I do remember in that moment of waking up of that, like I really woke up with that sense of like really positive emotions and feeling really, really good. And like having that sense of like, Oh wait, I want to go back. I want to go back. Like I didn't want to wake up yet. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and kind of carried that for quite a while that morning. Like just, just this joyous sense and the sense of like, happiness that my daughter is in such a good place and just it, it was just a very positive ending to yeah. that that is absolutely beautiful i i suspect that if the alarm hadn't gone off you would have just lingered at the party longer and there would have been more of the same because i think yeah. <laughs> most of the storyline had probably worked itself out by then as we will explore and you were just you know enjoying it and lingering um, and yeah. isn't it lovely when a dream has such a positive feel, uplifting feel, and as you say, it sort of um, uh, falls into your day and, and you carry that emotion around with you all day? Yeah. Mm, yes, it's really good beautiful. Feeling. Yeah. Okay, there's, um, I've taken all the notes. <laughs> I've got three and a half pieces of paper here, which is oh, great. Really? No, it's great. You, um, it's wonderful. I've got all the, all the key points. Uh, one of the things that really struck me, and I don't know whether you'd noticed it, was that obviously at the beginning you had that amazing feeling of opening that door and there, was, there were all these other beautiful rooms and that beautiful space. And then when you went uh -huh. in there, it was idyllic. It was colourful. It was related to children on the whole, which is your work. It had all that kind of feel to it. And mm -hmm. then when you were standing outside, when you were standing in the lobby outside um, Kelly's parents' place, there was almost a similar feeling, but you hadn't opened the door because you particularly mm -hmm. mentioned the door. You said there is a door and the door looks like we're outside the door and it looks like a fancy big apartment inside. So there's this feeling of, yeah, whether you could see the fancy big apartment or the door reminded you of that. There's a feeling that if I open this door, it's going to be really big inside, perhaps similar to when I opened the door at the beginning of the dream and had all the extra rooms. So it's mm -hmm. that lovely thing. And I was thinking that when you were mentioning it, thinking, oh, that's similar. Maybe it's a kind of like a recurring motif or something. But then yeah. you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned the water feature, the fountain in the lobby. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, yeah, we had the waterfalls. We had the waterfalls going along the journey earlier in the dream. Mm -hmm. So there's kind mm -hmm. of a repeat there. Yeah. Um, and then when you actually got in, um, inside, uh, you know, you, you said it was similar, it was idyllic, it was playful, everybody was happy, um, that 
so th- I sort of thought as you were describing it that although there were some adult conundrums to meet like should I take my clothes off or not and the fact that these mm-hmm. are adult people there was still that sense of playfulness and openness that you kind of got when at the beginning of the dream when you went into the sand playroom for example mm-hmm so to me, there was that sort of similarity with the with the beginning and the end, and a and a journey in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. So, yeah. um, want to explore some of that, and I also loved the bit in the middle where in in the journey part of the dream where it was, oh, I can't quite photograph this waterfall, or where's my phone? And I think, have you ever used a phone successfully in a dream, to your knowledge? Oh, that's a great great question. Um, not that I can recall. No. They're usually very pesky little things. I, I even, yeah. if I've got a phone in a dream and, you know, it's getting really complicated and the numbers keep morphing and it turns, it has all yep. these extra screens and all these things, I sometimes, rarely, but sometimes that is a clue for me and I think, hang on a minute, I'm dreaming here and I can jump into a lucid dream because uh, for me personally, I can sometimes get a phone to work in a dream, but not often. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so part of your not getting your phone or the camera on it to work may, might just be part of that thing where I, similar to in dreams where it's difficult to read a continuing passage without the words changing into something else or it's difficult okay. to look at a clock and look at another clock and they both they both will often tell different times so it's kind of like a dream thing going on there but I still take it Mary Beth that that not being able to take the photos was um was a key part of the dream interpretation so we will look at that too okay and I also like that bit, I will ask you some questions in a minute, but um, sure. I, I also really like that bit in the dream where it was, oh, I couldn't take the photo and your husband says, John says, well, do you want to go back? Should we go back and take the photo? No, no, we'll continue on the journey. And then there uh-huh. were a few references to going back. There was at the beginning of the dream, um, because he was coming to pick you up, you had to go back through the door into the original uh-huh. office to get out. And then there was a sense, I think, as you were, thinking about going to the party there was a question of going back somewhere there too wasn't there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, yeah so there's um a a kind of conundrum throughout the whole dream of do I go forward or do I go back I've discovered something wonderful can I take this on board or uh, hmm should I step back from this (laughs) Uh uh-huh uh-huh so um yeah remember when was when was your dream this was oh gosh it would probably a week or two ago week a week and a half ago yeah a week and a half ago so when we're looking at a dream we're primarily at the starting point is to say that the dream is reflecting your conscious and unconscious experiences of the one to two days before the dream and uh-huh. then and then whatever's going on in that time will then resonate and may bring up past stuff which I can, uh-huh. I can see a couple of things here and bring them up from comparison and then can sometimes project forward. So as while we're looking at this, um, uh-huh. have in the back of your mind what was happening consciously or have in mind what was happening unconsciously. How can we even say that? But you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what might have been lingering at the back of your mind sure, um, sure. Ab- about the time of the dream or a day or two before. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that Izzy is actually 20 and she was her... She was at actual age in the dream, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah. And and yet when you went into the party, there were 20 to 30 people there. And although they were adults, it was interesting that you had that number, 20 to 30. Uh-huh. And so I suspect at some level, we may be looking at um, what what lay before you <laughs> when you had the dream, uh-huh. what possibilities lay before you at the dream, and comparing those to what was happening when you were 20 um, and perhaps 20 to 30 years uh-huh. old, what you did do, what you may have missed doing, opportunities you may have taken, opportunities you may have missed. Because there's that uh-huh. sense of going to the party, so there's something about 20 to 30. Uh-huh. So just bear that in mind too. Okay. Um, I know we haven't really done anything yet with it, but how are we going so far? <laughs> oh, no, it's good. It's good. It's all fascinating. And I, yeah, I definitely it can think of things in the like, time before the dream you know the one to two days before that definitely are associated okay that's really lovely um so although I teach people when they interpret the dreams to start at the beginning and go through I don't actually do that in the dream show I, I, I jump in at the bits that I love so um and I know that's what our audience likes too as everybody's listening so there was a bit where you were at the party let me just find my note on this. And so you, you, you had mixed feelings. 
Uh-huh. Have you gone in? You had gone and You had mixed feelings. Do I try? Do I try? Do I try? Oh, no. It's, it's, you were, sorry, you were standing outside the door in the lobby. You had mixed feelings. Do I try? This is exciting. Um, it uh-huh. could be different for me. Do I go in? Or, hmm, number two, I don't think this is appropriate. It's like mum versus college kids. I should have boundaries here. And that was where you mentioned going back and forth before you decided, oh, just going to go in. <laughs> yeah. So, so that probably encapsulates whatever the opportunities were that you were maybe realizing at the time of the dream that there was one part of you that's going this could be exciting this could be different I really should try and the other part of you questioning the appropriateness of someone who is a mother or someone your age or someone who has boundaries that are that you value and whether that's appropriate for somebody like you to do that thing Uh Um, and I wonder whether that's why it's Izzy that comes to the dream why it's the party that Izzy takes you to because it's like maybe Izzy is reminding you of when you were 20 (laughs) so and particularly because a lot of other college kids turn up to the party it's almost like well when I Mary Beth was 20 or in my 20s and 30s maybe I, I could have done this I could have I could have tried exciting things I could have tried different things or maybe you did you did try exciting or different things but now in my life now I'm not sure that even though I want to step out and do something exciting and different I'm not sure that it's appropriate so it's sort of bringing up those kind of thoughts and questioning the boundaries that you have in place at the moment uh-huh which is why I absolutely love that you decide to go for it <laughs> yes <laughs> Which is wonderful. And although, you know, throughout the dream, there are so many positive um, emotions. And I actually tried and failed, I think, to write most of the emotions that you mentioned in capital letters so they would jump out at me. So if uh-huh. I just read those back as a flow through the dream, I've got amazed, but also confused, disappointed, uh-huh. sadness. Uh, I've got drizzling rain, which I think I was thinking that was like kind of like an emotion. <laughs> Um, yeah and then I think I think I stopped writing in capital letters then the next there was a bit of a a a, a miss then it was comfortable intense happiness freedom pride so there's that sort of flow of um, those emotions when you track the emotions in a dream can give you a sense of what it is you're going through in life and I am amazed that there are amazing possibilities in my life but I'm also confused about something and I'm disappointed in myself how how I come I hadn't realized that these possibilities were with me how come I hadn't realized this earlier and then I'm sad because I, I want to share this with co-worker, co-workers but I want to stay here but I've got to go and do something else and I'm sad uh-huh. about that so then uh-huh. we go on a journey we'll come back to later and then we have the conundrum do I go in do I not go in and then yes you go in and it's all bright and wonderful and intense and happy and carefree and finishes with pride. So that's kind of like the overview of the emotional track of um, Uh what what you're feeling leading up to this decision-making and what your unconscious mind currently believes that stepping in and trying something exciting and different will lead to. Uh So if we start at the beginning of the dream, we've got the sense of, and I, and I, love, I love this dream for lots of reasons, but one is that um, for people listening in, um, it, it, you'll often see in a long dream that the beginning of the dream will often, not always, but often be uh, quite recognisable compared to waking life, as such as in yours, Mary Beth, you're in your office, it's your normal office, you're being a therapist, everything looks normal until you open the door. Yeah. And then as a long dream proceeds, it will often get more and more surreal. Um, yours didn't get incredibly surreal, but it did definitely sort of change in its nature. And mm-hmm. that often happens when the original first part of the dream does present the issue or the situation that the rest of the dream goes on to explore. And as the dream continues to get more colorful, more surreal, more emotional, um, that's often bringing in your unconscious mind's reflection on the issue. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we know at the beginning of the dream that there's a because it's you in your office. There's this kind of conscious. Yeah, I already know. I, I've been. I've gone to sleep. I'm having this dream. I already know that I go to work. That I'm a therapist, and I already know that to some extent I know there's a door, and I'm mm-hmm. kind of thinking about whether I'm going to open it. So it's a sense of you've gone to sleep thinking 
there is a new potential in my life. There's something I can open myself to. Um, uh -huh. I'm not sure how I feel about it. But in the dream, it's like, yeah, open the door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that in, in real life, it's a door to a storage room, I think you said. Yeah. 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 So isn't it lovely that a room where you would normally just store stuff? Well, what kind of stuff? Is it stuff that you use or stuff that you don't use? In real life. Uh, I, would, I would say a mix of both. It's a, it's definitely not a room that I access very often. Um, it's more mm. like, yeah, stuff that's tucked away for not frequent. Yeah. Get, get, yeah. That might come in useful one day, one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, tucked away, you don't access it often. So this is, in dream terms, a part of yourself that is tucked away that you don't access often. And that probably has stuff in it that may or may not be useful, it may, ha may have stuff in it that you've been holding on to that you don't need. But on the other hand, it may have stuff that you've just kept in store for a long time, like particular gifts and talents and ideas, and you haven't brought them out and done anything with them. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, you open that door. And what I loved is that you said it's a whole wing to a building outside the door and then it was also a hallway so uh -huh. the idea that you didn't just say oh it was all these lovely extra rooms it was actually a wing and the sense I got from that was I understand that architecturally but I was thinking like well what do wings do what do yeah. wings do yeah <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> yeah this is this I can fly I can spread my wings literally I can I can spread my wings a bird can't do a lot until it learns to open its wings whether or not it flies it's that expansive kind of feeling and you had that expansive feeling in the you you know a lot of people will open a door in a dream it's got one little room but you had three yes. <laughs> and a hallway you had a means yes. to travel between them yeah which is fantastic and there were large rooms too you definitely said they were large yes yes <laughs> Um, interestingly, you said it was a mirror image, too, of your current therapy. So to what extent was it a mirror image? So like in the, the um, we're in this house that's converted into our therapy offices, and we all share um, one space where our desks are, and then we have a hallway with like three rooms that we meet with people for therapy in. Um, but it's a pretty small house, and the rooms are pretty small. So it basically was like the door was going the other direction from where our desks are. And so it was the same like shape and everything as the hallway that currently exists, but much bigger. And each room was much bigger and had lots more things in it. Okay. That that, yeah, it does. Makes perfect sense. So everything about it was bigger. Um, yeah. And I'm also intrigued that it was a mirror image, that it was like almost like the other side. The other yeah. it, That's it really, isn't it? It's the other side, the other side of the door, the other side of the image. The mm -hmm. other, the, so to put that in kind of um, terms to you, um, where I am now, there's this whole other side of me that is similar but much bigger. Uh-huh. Um, bigger, you, I've written, you said bigger, better, more equipment, more art supplies, and particularly the Sam Playroom. Was, it was idyllic, you said, idyllically oh. set up. So there's all of that, yeah, whatever I, Mary Beth, am doing now in life, I can actually do it much bigger, better, with um, more equipment, physically in your therapy space, but also energetically within yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can draw on more supplies within myself, more things, more, um, more tools, whether that's um, you know, energetic tools to do things in a, to, to do my life in a bigger, better way. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And I love that it was a sound playroom. So although you've said that you are a therapist and you largely deal with kids, um, in this dream, I guess you also, because it was a sound playroom that you loved, you were also playing as you were at the end of the dream too. So you had your own, um, I guess, inner kids really enjoying this, all these amazing possibilities too. Yeah, yeah. Which also brings us back to that question later on about, you know, well, is it really appropriate for a mum to, to, to do something like this? Yeah. <laughs> would have been all right for college students, but not now. And that thing that you said, yeah, it would have been all right for college kids. is that sense of graduating college with all these amazing ideas you've got. And I don't know, talk to me about what it's like to be a college kid fresh out of college. What, what do opportunities in life look like? Yeah. Um, it, you mean in general or what was it like for me as a... Uh, both. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I, yeah. Because I guess I would think in general, I think, you know, you're, it's a time of your life where you're just open to so much possibility and you're, you know, everything is new and exciting and 
you're trying to find your best fit in the world. Um, and I would say for me personally, if I look back at that time in my life, it was it was those things, but it was also a lot of anxiety because I think I was very um, unsure of of where, if and where I was going to find a fit and what I was going to do next. And um, I think it, I think that brought up a lot of anxiety for me in that moment. Yeah, I I, I can imagine um, strangely that also in hindsight we look back and we see our own college kids graduating and having exactly what they do have, as you say, the openness, the excitement, the possibilities, but inside mm-hmm. their own heads, they've probably got just as much anxiety as sure. you and I had at that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that sense there of reflex, reflecting back and, you know, particularly with yourself, what would life have been like? What choices might you have made if you didn't have that anxiety? Or what choices would, might you have made if you knew, um, looking back through the years, you've truly knew um, the open or the possibilities that lay ahead of you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's that theme in the dream, isn't there, of looking back or shall we go back as well, reflecting yeah. back. So it's coming of this. You, you mentioned that your son wasn't in your dream. Is, is this your youngest child? Uh, my son is my youngest child, yeah. And how old is he at the moment? He is 17. Okay, so he's on the verge of leaving school. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He'll, yeah, he's in his senior year. So you're also in the verge of that second graduating college, that um, graduating the nest. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the wing, the whole wing to open when you graduate oh, yes, the empty you're nest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like, although you will be a mum all your life, of course, yeah. um, there's also that sense of maybe, maybe you there are t- aspects of your life where you don't have to be the mum with the boundaries where you can have the college kid freedoms all over again and make mm-hmm. new and exciting and different choices and spread your wings mm-hmm. yeah that's nice mm. so going back to what's the beginning of the dream you're amazed at all the possibilities which is great they may have been unconscious until your dream brought them up but the fact that you've brought the dream into consciousness to talk about means that you are whether or not you can name them you are already now in touch at least energetically with a sense of i mary beth have amazing possibilities um uh-huh. within me um and i love that thought that um thought that came up in your dream of, oh maybe i could start seeing adults so it's a one instant kind of conscious thought was I can expand my business by seeing adults as well. Uh-huh. Although, yeah, although this isn't necessarily about your, your work at all, this dream. Sure. Um, yeah, and I love that confusion. How come this has been with me all along and I've never noticed it? Don't we, uh, don't we all have that at so many times in our lives? <laughs> Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> it's like, if only I knew then what I know now. Yeah, yeah. That hindsight is, you know, so much clearer, isn't it? It is so much clearer. I have it in really silly little things sometimes too. Like, you know, those practical things around the house, for example, that you suddenly think, what? why do I do it that way? If I did it this way, it's three steps less. It's much quicker. <laughs> you know, you know, that kind of, so we all have those mini breakthroughs all the time. And we also have these maxi breakthroughs as well. When you suddenly realize, as I think you did in your dream, Mary Beth, that sense of um, what, how, how can these uh, opportunities have been with me all along and I never noticed it. And you're disappointed with yourself for being mm-hmm. human. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and for t- t- taking steps in life driven by anxiety and other issues and parenthood. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, so you're in the sound playroom and all is going well. And then, oh, you've got you to go back to reality and go on this camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So talk to me about camping. Is this something you often do? Um, it's something um, my husband and I used to do quite a bit and did a lot when our kids were young. And we don't do it as often anymore. I do enjoy it. Um, mm. And I think we've talked about, you know, we need to get back to doing it more often. Um, but it's been infrequent in recent years. Right. So in the dream, it was something that um, was on offer, although even though you've been talking in real life about getting back to it, in the dream sense of, oh, I do want to do it, but I've got all Mm -hmm. these other amazing opportunities. I didn't really want to stop doing that and go on this trip. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet when you go, it's scenic and amazing, and uh, you said brilliant, full colour, exaggerated from reality, you said, which is really that where I think part of the surrealism of the dream comes in the sort of unconscious mind really painting the picture it was mm-hmm. playful you know you met you 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 described the river as a rolling river which has got a kind of playful sense in it hasn't it yeah yeah i think you said the water flow if i can read my writing was 
awe-inspiring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a sense of when I'm when in waking life, I open myself to things that I haven't done for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe I don't want to do them, but maybe actually once I start them, they're going to be awe-inspiring and wonderful. So we're not really talking about camping necessarily. I think your dreaming mind is using that as an analogy. You know, in, in real life, you're thinking, oh, yeah, we should go camping again one day. It would be really good. I don't really want mm-hmm. to do it, but yeah. And so it's using that analogy for something else in your life. There's something inspired by the um, sand play room in the first part of your dream. I really want to go on a bigger journey, but uh, do I or do I? I'm not, how do I really feel about this? and the dream goes well do it and find out it's going to yeah. be amazing <laughs> yeah. so it's kind of encouraging you so that that aspect of although I can think of interesting things and exciting things that I would like to try or different things I would like to try uh, once again I acknowledge that part of me doesn't really want to do that part of me would just want to stay here and play um, but actually I, in exploring that my dream I find out that if I go it's actually is quite amazing there's amazing mm-hmm. thing amazing things happening. Describe those waterfalls a bit, Mary Beth. Yeah, I just, I remember that they were like, um, like just really like, uh, they were like right next to the road. So like if you stopped the car, you, you didn't like have to go any distance to get to them. They were just right there and just really kind of massive, like very wide and just really, really gushing with water. Ah, oh, fantastic. So it's like, if I take this next step on my journey, it's just deciding to take that journey that ma- is all that matters because there are no complicated journeys after that. Everything is right there, just like the waterfalls were right there. These things I want to photograph, I want to notice, they're all inspiring, are right there. These, mm-hmm. these things that I want to do in my life are right there. It's just opening that door and doing it. Mm-hmm. So then... Um, However, with all things in life that are right there and exciting and wonderful, there do come the drizzling rain moments and the muddy moments. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but as you say in the dream, it actually wasn't a big deal. It was kind of part of the plan. It wasn't really negative. So there's the adult speaking as opposed to the college graduate. There's the adult saying, even when you try exciting, wonderful things and you're inspired, it's not sunshine and roses or whatever the analogy is, every day. Uh-huh. It, it, it's, there are muddy parts of life, but hey, that's part of the plan. It's, not, it's part of the deal. So it's sort of suggesting that although when you were anxious when you were 20-odd, um, now you know that there are ups and downs and it's, it's, that, that's, that's not a thing to hold you back. You can cope with those things. Okay, yeah, yeah that mm. makes sense. So then we get to the really exciting part, the party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we, we've dealt with the ages that this is probably comparing you on the verge of stepping out into this exciting new opportunity now and comparing it to when you were 20 and comparing it to college, um, college years too. Um, uh-huh. I was interested that the guest book was on a podium because tell me what a podium is used for. Um, speaking and presenting. Hmm. And- is what it, makes me think of it is isn't it and that's the sense i got when you when you were at that part of the dream too so i, I thought there might be a, a a dream sort of clue there from your unconscious mind of this stepping out this this, this new uh, thing that you're going to step out into maybe about speaking and talking i don't know how much you speak and talk now but a bigger a bigger amount than you do and uh-huh. i had a I had a guest book on it so it may be are you a guest speaker are you thinking of being a guest speaker are you signing in to be a guest speaker are you signing into some kind of guest talking arrangement to enter the party there's all of that going on but oh no how can i do that i've got this t-shirt like it's only just it's only just doing its work at covering me up it's not really and i don't feel comfortable and then the big question which i'm asterisk how did i get here wearing this Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so, so it's that oh. sense. Of, yeah, I'm ready to do this big thing, which may or may not, may or may not involve being a speaker or speaking out or taking the podium in some kind of sense of doing this bigger, larger thing. But um, but who am I to do that? Because look, you know, how did how did I get all the way here? Who uh, uh, and I'm only this. I'm only this person wearing this little t-shirt. I'm not good oh. enough. I can't get in. They won't take me seriously. I'm not covered. Oh. 
um, mm-hmm. which is what all our unconscious minds do at such a moment. Um, yeah. And so it's really good to hear it there. And what I love is it's Izzy and Kelly that talk you through. So whether that's Izzy and Kelly representing their real energies in real life, or whether that's similar to your 20-year-old self saying to mm-hmm. you, you know, it is fine. Don't worry. Just take the T-shirt off. Be natural. And it's not about being naked physically, is it? It's about being naked and open emotionally it's about being authentic this is hey guys uh-huh. this is the real me <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. i'm not putting an image on here it's not a t-shirt it's not a ball gown it's not a corporate suit this is me what you see is what you get yeah which is really really lovely and i, and I also loved that throughout that last part of the dream mary beth you mentioned that you had the sense that everyone was naked but you were only looking at faces and i think at the end but even on the couch uh-huh. you said that um that that there's yeah you, you emphasized again seeing your face not seeing parts and uh-huh. i wondered even though none of us as therapists well that's not true very few <laughs> of us as therapists these days actually use a couch for laying on <laughs> right right <laughs> apologies for all you therapists that do that are listening in but this is just me <laughs> talking here <laughs> nakedly talking about what i think about couches but we do use couches for people to sit on and talk to us Yes. Um, maybe. So there's a sense there of, um, I wondered whether there was a, a double sense there in the dream of when you're talking with therapists, this sense of however much our clients or you yourself um, make yourself naked in terms of uh, the client being open about themselves or authentic or you, the therapist, bringing in authenticity about your own life. Whatever is happening down there on the body in the dream, we're just looking at each other face to face. We're just we're just concentrating on facing things here. So uh-huh. I don't know, there was something I can't quite put words around at the moment about when you face things either on your own as a person or when you face things in therapy as a therapist or the client, it, it's all about the, the healing sense of the facing. It's not about the shock value of the, the nakedness and the exposure. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Which is really lovely. So there's, yeah. there's a sort of contemplating that in the dream. Um, and just one other last thing here, which is just, excuse me, while I just look at my writing again. Um, yeah, so you say everyone's happy, relaxed, no cares. Uh, I think Izzy says, I just want you to be comfortable and open. Don't feel shy. Don't be nervous. People will accept you just the way you are. So there's that blessing for authenticity again. Uh-huh. And... Oh, here it is. This is a bit. So, yeah, lay, laying on the couch, <laughs> on your stomach, shoulders and arms off. Perfect, perfect mixed solution. Um, uh-huh. And I thought that was really lovely. I thought, you know, when you step into doing something new, yeah, halfway, dip your toes uh-huh. in the water. This much uh-huh. I'm going to expose, this much I'm not going to expose. I feel comfortable about this. Um, and then again, for me, I thought what was interesting, for me, it's your dream, but excuse me, just taking over your dream for a moment here. That's great, me, I love it. Dream, <laughs> I was interesting that you were on the couch, um, but you said that the other people were kind of like a circle, and it was kind of like, you said they were more cross-legged on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, this is like you being in the speaking position or in the teaching position. You're the one, they're in the circle, they're the cross-legged disciples listening to you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, your dream is offering you that image of if you um, are thinking about something along those lines, but you're not quite ready to be fully exposed or fully exposed in whatever that means to you, there is this halfway stage that you can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting that although as women, most of us would, of course, prefer if we had a choice to expose the back rather than the front, there may also, <laughs> yes. be, there may also be some dream symbolism that I'm not sure about. I'll tell you about my past, what's behind me if, if I need to, but I'm not so sure about bearing my whole chest or my whole soul or my whole heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you said you felt sa- yeah, safety on the couch, that was it. And I loved at the end, even though the alarm went off, I loved that when you woke up, you had such pride for Izzy. So again, I'm sure you have pride for Izzy in waking life herself, but there's also a sense at the end of the dream of having pride for the 20-year-old self, part of yourself, which is now ready to take different steps. I'm going to stop there and hand it over to you for your comments, thoughts, further exploration. Yeah, no, that's all. That's very, it's beautiful. And I think a lot of what you said really kind of resonates. And um 
It's interesting because, yeah, I, I mean, I have been sort of in my work life thinking about kind of expanding things and trying new things. And I definitely get it's interesting that you brought up the speaking and the presenting side of things because that's something that I'm super uncomfortable with. <laughs> um, but the people that I work with are often like encouraging me to try and to do. And I'm always like, oh, no, 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 that's not my thing. I can't. <laughs> like, public <laughs> speaking is not for me. And so that's been an interesting thing for me over the past few years in my job, actually, of people trying to kind of encourage that and me kind of being like, no, thanks. Um, mm. And I think even just in recent thinking about making some changes, like part of what I've been thinking about is like um, expanding my work to, like I said, to working with some adults as well, that that it is an expansion and it is like I'm putting myself out there to try something new. Um, but yeah, it's almost like you said, like the halfway dipping your toes in. It's trying something new, but it's not putting myself up at a podium and speaking to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. dipping my toes in, I guess. And that, and, that, and, that, and that in itself can be a halfway stage to gradually one day being on the podium. But, right. you know, here you are today and I'm hearing a beautiful voice, very confident, you know, having, a, having an amazing conversation that lots and lots and lots of people are listening to. So you're kind of on a podium today uh-huh. <laughs> and, <you're>, <laughs> <laughs> and you're my guest and you contacted me after this dream. So it wasn't that you contacted me before this dream and then started to dream about, oh, I'm going to be a guest on a podium. That came before right. that. So there are many ways to be on a podium. You don't actually have to be on a physical podium worried about what you're wearing, like the dream image. You can actually uh-huh. be on a, you can have a podcast, for example. There's one thing yeah. that springs to mind to me. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, which is wonderful. So yes, your, your, your dreaming mind did its, uh, did its amazing job of um, your conscious mind, talking with your unconscious mind and doing some creative problem solving along the way, didn't it? Uh-huh. Mm. It did, it did. Yeah. And also introducing you to uh, many aspects of yourself that you've maybe had in storage for a while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do, like, I appreciated you mentioning, too, like, the thinking of myself as a, you know, 20 to 30-year-old and, like, possible missed opportunities and things. Because in my mind, in thinking about the dream, I was really thinking of Izzy as Izzy. Mm. And um, which some things fit there, too, because I had just had a conversation with her, like, the two nights before I had that dream um, and during which I was very like any year, any past years when I maybe worried about you, like when you were in high school and you know, things weren't going well and I was really concerned for you. Like right now I feel like you're flourishing and you're flying and you're doing wonderful things. And I just, my conversation with her was really good and I felt really good about where she's at. So in my mind I was like, well, yeah, I dreamed she was naked cause look at her go. She's just like, <laughs> Yes. And living life. And um, yeah, so I and think it, yeah, you, you're right. That's absolutely right. It is also a reflection of that because that was what happened to you and your dream is mm-hmm. processing that. And then and 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 uh, and being proud about it and being pleased about it, being happy and celebrating your 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 job and letting Izzy take wing mm-hmm. <laughs> out into the outside world. And then at the deeper level, which we have just done and which I always encourage people to do is no matter how much that resonates with what's happening with outer people uh, other people in your life and their relationships then take oh I guess the mirror image like your dream suggested there the mirror image and how does this relate to me and my 20 year old and my 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 flying which is exactly what we've just done so you uh, a lot of people will sometimes say oh but my dream is only about you know, so-and-so was in my dream because it's only about my relationship with them. And then when you mm-hmm. encourage them to do, which you have demonstrated beautifully, encourage them to then look at, well, if I see Izzy as a part of me or or what my your conversation you had with Izzy the other day, how that mm-hmm. resonated within you and to see the, the, the changes and the shifts or the acknowledgements or the awesomeness that it brings up within yourself is to take that deeper um, step, which means you can not only celebrate is he going out into the world in your case, but you as well? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So normally we um, create a dream alchemy practice to, to finish the, the podcast. And, um, you know, that usually means working with an image or a, or a, a piece of drama in the dream to, to, to make something that maybe was limiting, identified as limiting in the dream to unlimited a bit. Uh-huh. Um, so there are a few possibilities there. Does anything jump out at you that you would feel that you would like to um, 
that we've identified that you would like to open a little bit? Hmm, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think, I, I guess for me, the part that stands out the most or resonates the most is the um, the sort of getting, getting past anxiety and feeling okay with um, letting my myself show you know being vulnerable mm -hmm. and taking risks and um letting my true self kind of show does that make sense yeah absolutely it does yeah so in the dream in many ways that is reflected at two points one is where you're having the con con conundrum outside whether or not to go into the party and the uh -huh. other one basically being about the t-shirt and taking it off isn't it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so let me just have a little think about this mm -hmm. hmm I think I don't want to I don't want to jump in and give you an no 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 let me just change I was going to give you one alchemy and I've just changed my mind on it. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um let's go for a, a, a dialogue. So I for people listening in I'll just describe how this done, how this is done and I'm you probably know Mary Beth but in the dream dialogue sense you do it with a piece of paper and a pen or you do it with your computer. Um and you allow 10 to 15 minutes no more. You have a quick exchange dialogue with um, either another character or a symbol in your dream. And you do it really fast so you don't let your editing mind um, take part in the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a quick, fire conversation. I'll give you the opening line in a minute. And generally, um, you or the symbol will maybe speak a sentence, often just a few words. Sometimes it'll just go, huh? <laughs> what <laughs> something like that but the moment any sort of long erudite conversations come in you know that you've got your conscious mind involved it's not an unconscious dialogue so the idea is to kind of get really fast at writing some people use their non-dominant hand but that's just a little little twist in it um and it, the idea is to sort of get yourself back in the dream state and, and get some more out of the character or the thing um and i, I am tempted to yeah, I know that you can do this because you're a therapist. That whole party thing, <laughs> uh -huh. forget who was the host. Just just see it is a, it's a room with an amazing party going on in it. Okay. And so that's the party. And you are um, outside the door. We're, we're going, are you still outside? Uh, let me, sorry, let me just get this right. No, you're inside the door and you're on the couch. Okay. So you, you're on the couch and you've got those people sitting around you cross-legged. Okay. All right. And you're going to be talking to the party. And the first few, I'm going to do this in your private time, not now. And the first few sentences will probably be absolute garbage, but you just keep going at it and something will come out of it. And you're going to be on the couch and you're going to say, and your opening line is going to be, well, I've come to the party. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you let the party take over from there. And because you're doing this af not only after the dream, but after our exploration, the party or that part of, part of yourself that is ready to embrace you in those senses is going to deliver more information. And because you have identified the thing that you would like to dream alchemize as being um, the anxiety, that is what's going to happen in that conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to I'm going to write about like I can I can write about what I would say and what others would say as well, right? Just Yeah, so you just put well, I've come to the party and then the party as a kind of it may be a unified voice or it may be individuals at the party may answer you. Okay. And then just keep it as a, you know, only allow them a few words or a sentence and then you come back in and just just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going until you suddenly think, "Oh, that's interesting." <laughs> um, okay. And you will expect some kind of transformation in that to occur or some kind, some thing to come up, some insight which helps you to further step away from the anxiety and just be embraced by the party. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I love it. Any final questions before we wrap? Um, I don't think so. I think that was super, that was great. Uh, um, yeah, it felt good to kind of go through that and hear your thoughts. And I'm looking forward to doing this alchemy and seeing what comes out of it. Okay. Thank you for being a fabulous guest on the Dream Show, Mary Beth. Thanks so much. That was lovely, wasn't it? What, what did you get from that? Did you get some new tips about how to interpret and explore your own dreams? 
Did you get insights, the kind of insights that we all get when we listen to a conversation between two people, but particularly when we're having a conversation about a dream which, which delves deeply into the inner world? I hope you got plenty. If you'd like to find out more about how to work with your own dreams or, or how to be a therapist and work with other people with their dreams, and maybe combining with the sense that it is now January, the beginning of a new year, if you're listening to this in real time, and maybe you're thinking also of stepping out and doing something new, then remember my courses at the Dream Academy. So the website address is dream-academy-online.com. We have students from all over the world there, including, I've got a little list here, including Australia, Austria, Argentina, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Egypt, England, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Japan, Mexico, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Slovenia, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, other areas of the United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, (laughs) the USA and Vietnam. So maybe you recognize your country or maybe you want to get on the list. (laughs) Dream-academy-online so that you can learn more about understanding your own dreams or helping other people to to get to the kind of insights that we got to today with Mary Beth. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Dream Show. The next episode, episode 253, is coming out on the 24th of February 2022, if you're listening to this in real time. Have a wonderful month. I'm Jane Teresa Anderson. Mm-hmm.